Welcome everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for SimonSaysStamp.com and I'm working in my circle journal and this one I've titled With Wings. I've used a lot of Tim Holtz products and I'm starting off with some a five and a half inch circle cut with some Tim Holtz paper and also watercolor cardstock cut at a four and a half inch circle. I'm starting off by adding some speckled egg just onto the watercolor cardstock with my ink blending tool. It's really light as it starts off and then I'll end up adding a little bit of vintage photo also around just in some areas, kind of random, and I like to work in three areas of color. I'm going to go back in with a little bit more speckled egg just to darken that up a little bit and once I'm happy with that I'm going to squirt some water on my surface here and use a paintbrush and just tap on some water and then I can grab a paper towel and dab that up. Now you can start to see the color a little bit better. So once I have a first layer of color, what I want to do is to dry this off really well. And then I'll be using the Tim Holtz Distress Micro Glaze. And I'm going to set in this ink through a stencil. I'm using a blending tool. And these stencils are from Simon Says Stamp. They're a set of four leaves. And I'm just pouncing this on and I'm working with the stencil so I don't flip up any of those little sharp edges. So this will set the ink and create a resist and I'm going to add a little bit darker color on top once I'm done stenciling. To add my layers of color I've just put on some speckled egg and a little bit of water and now I can dab my paper right into that ink. And in between most of these steps I'll dry this with a heat gun before I add more color. I'll be adding a little bit more speckled egg and this time I won't add as much water and I'll get a little bit deeper color and I like to grab those dots and get that watercolor look. I'll show you how this is looking real quick. You can start to see those leaves popping through but it needs to be just a little bit darker. This next time I'm going in with some vintage photo and this will be darkening up some of those areas. And I can adjust the intensity of the color by just blotting that up a little bit with a paper towel. I'll add another layer of the speckled egg, just distress ink, and again with some water. And this is really giving me a nice mix of in between the blue and the brown. And once again, I'll dry this off before I move forward. For my final layer of color, I'm using the speckled egg oxide ink this time, and this will sit on top of all that ink. I've wet it down with some water, and I've also run my finger through it just to get some more splotches and heavier areas. Before I clean up my ink, I'll wet that down again and use a paintbrush and just add some splatters to the page. To darken up my background page, I'm using a little bit of vintage photo and a blending tool and I'm just adding this around the edges. This will really make the colors cohesive and really match well. I also want to add a little bit of speckled egg to my background piece and I am just using some of the oxide ink watered it down and I'm just splattering on some color mostly around the back edges. For my flowers, I've used the Tim Holtz Ideology Botanicals, and I really love this daisy pattern, but I want to color these in, so I'm going to use a Distress Embossing Pen. The pens come in two sizes. I'm using the bullet tip instead of the really fine line, and this is almost like a brush, and it's really easy just to add the marker on. This is quite clear, and one of Tim's tricks is to pick it up and look at it so you can see where you're going with your marker. I'll pick this up in a second, and you can see how easy it is to see the shine of the marker. So right there, you can see where I've already colored in using the embossing ink. And I'll finish this up, and then I can sprinkle in some speckled egg embossing glaze, and I'll just pour this right over the top and tap off the excess. Now you can see where that sticks just right to that embossing ink from the marker. I heat up my heat tool and I can heat this around and it heats up really quickly and since it's such a nice smooth surface it gives me a really clean embossing. I'll put the rest of this back in the jar from my paper and I'm going back over with my marker and I'm sorry I'm a little bit off screen. But you can go back and add darker color just by getting a double layer of that embossing glaze. So once I have the areas marked up with my marker, I can sprinkle that again with that embossing glaze. And again, heat set this with my heat tool. If you pick it up, it will heat really fast. So now I have the petals covered. I'm going to put this back into the jar and I'll go in and color the center of the flower with my embossing pen again. And then I can use Vintage Photo 
embossing glaze to color this in. I will get a little bit of vintage photo around in the speckled egg area, but that's it's fine. It looks like a shadow. So once I heat this up, it looks absolutely beautiful. Next, I've added some score tape to the back of my disc, and I'm going to put this in the center. This is just tacking it down. I will be sewing around the outer edge once I have this in place. So I've sewed this with some black thread, and now I'm adding on my bouquet of flowers with a little bit of foam tape for some dimension. And I did go back in and add the embossing glaze to the rest of those flowers and flower centers. And so now I'm starting to put my pieces together. I'm using one of the Tim Holtz quote chips, and I've decided to leave it plain, but I'm adding a little bit of dimensional tape and some score tape to the back so I can put this on top of the daisies and it will sit flush right over those daisies. So once I have that positioned, I can press that down. I've also cut around the edges of some of the butterflies from the botanicals ephemera pack, and I've pinched them off a little bit in the center and added Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue just at that fold so the wings could sit up. I've also added some of the Tim Holtz clipping stickers to complete my title, and I've added a few glossy accents for some dimensional dots. This is a super quick and easy art journal page in that circle form that I've been doing, and I do have all my supplies listed in the description box below. You can also check out our blog post for additional photos. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.